All right, guys, we are back out here at the car to finish up some stuff we didn't do in the last video. In the last video, you've seen we converted this car, our new project car, to lithium. We put that big 150 amp hour cloud energy battery in here. Uh, we had a little problem with the fit, but we got it to fit. It works good. We did a full charge on it. Now we got to hook up all our 12 volt accessories. So what we're going to do for that, since this is one battery putting out 48 volts, we got to convert it down to 12 volts. So we're going to put a DC to DC converter in here. Uh, that is keyed so when you turn the key off it shuts the power off everything that way you don't have that parasitic drain on your battery we're going to put that in here and then we're going to jump the wire from that over to a fuse block so everything 12 volt on this cart would work off of the fuse block so like the speakers the lights the all that stuff is going to work off of the fuse block and have its own separate fuse for each line which would be awesome and that's what we're going to get started on today Pretty much we're going to take the seat off of this, get in here, and then pick a spot for everything. I'll show you that when we get under there, but that's what we're doing today. All right, guys, this is what we're going to be working with today. We have the Pro Chaser DC to DC Intelligent Voltage Reducer. This is what we use on all of our projects uh, because it does have that wire to, that's keyed, and that's what we're going to do today, put this in. Uh, there are smaller ones, but they're not keyed. I just want to make sure I don't have that drain on the battery. You know, once I turn the key off, I want almost everything to shut off. But here's this. You guys can see that. I'll leave links to this stuff down below so you guys can uh, purchase that if you're looking to do the same thing. And you can see here, it is all nicely wired with the plug. It's already fused itself. And then in the box is the plug. You're just going to plug into your Pro Chaser and then wire everything in. And the wiring is pretty simple. If you look on the Pro Chaser, it tells you what each wire does. Yellow is the output plus. Black is output minus. Thin black is input minus. Thin red is key switch and red is input plus. So our, we're pretty much going to have power going into this from our battery, power coming out of this to our fuse block, and then the one wire is going to go to our key switch. So it turns this on and off when we turn the key. So that's a pretty simple thing there. It includes some butt connectors and stuff like that. Um, I usually solder mine together, so I probably won't, you know, use these ones. Or if I did, it would be the heat shrink kind. Something that holds a little better. And if you needed, the instructions do still show you how to hook them up if you're doing it with the key switch or without a key switch. There's the two separate wiring diagrams. And then next is just, this is the fuse panel we use. What I like about, oh, get you guys in frame. What I like about this one is it has, when a fuse is blown, it will light up. There'll be a light that lights up to let you know, okay, this is the one that popped. You guys can see the lights in there maybe. But this one's pretty nice. It's a six position. Uh, most of the stuff we're going to have on here won't need more than that. And it also comes with labels. So you can label what you're, what you're putting to each section on here. Let's see if I can get this off with one hand. There we go. I, in fact, could not undo it with one hand. But you take the cover off. You can see you have your negative down here, negative lug. You're just going to run from your... Pro Chaser over to here and your positive lug you're going to run from the Pro Chaser over to here. That'll give this fuse panel power, positive and negative. Then you have your six positions and you can see the little light that'll that'll illuminate when your fuse, if you have a fuse that pops, that will illuminate, let you know which one. Makes it simple. Gives you some mounting screws if you need them. Um, I tend to use stainless when I'm doing something like this, so these I probably would not use. But that's a pretty easy setup for this. So that's what we're going to do. These are the two things we're going to use. Of course, you need your wiring stuff. You're going to need some extra wire. You're going to need some heat shrink, maybe a micro torch. I'll show you all that. You'll see it when we're doing it. But that'll get us all hooked up with our 12 volt accessories. And then there'll leave room in here if we wanted to add something else. We got a sound bar coming for this. Even though we do have the JBL Cruise speakers on here, they're nice and all. I mean, you can hear some good music, but they are lacking bass. So we're going to put a light or a sound bar in between those two, which would be a nice spot for it. And that way we can have uh, some good bass with this. But that's what we're going to do now. Let's get this, get you guys set up so you can see under the seat. And I'll show you where we're going to put this under there. It's going to be on the other side of the battery. For those of you who watched the, the video where we put this to con convert this to lithium, one side of the battery, we have the charger. The other side, we also put a piece of uh, wood down in there for a tray. That's where all this stuff's going to go. And then uh, it'll be looking nice and neat. So here we go. All right, guys, if you look down here, this is that tray on the other side of the battery. On that side's the charger. We have this big, huge battery. Then over here, we have this section. This is a section we reserved for our stuff. You can see down here, we have the wires we marked that we're already on 12 volt on our lead acids. 
Like these are for the lights, like our turn signal type of lights and everything. This is for our light bar. We marked them all LB for light bar. And then we have one more ground that was that was hooked up. I'm not sure exactly what that went to, but I'm thinking it goes to the gauge in the dash. But we'll hook it up and find out as we chase all these. And then we're going to zip tie everything up and make it look nice and neat. But down in here is where all our stuff's going to go. We'll probably put our Pro Chaser, something like this. And then our fuse block right here, maybe. See if I get you guys there. Something like that. That way we can feed everything in nice. It'll look neat and organized. And then uh, we tend to block these so we don't get sand and dirt up through these. Um, which I prefer. I mean, some people don't, but I've worked on the carts that don't have those blocked and they're filthy. So we'll probably end up blocking those at some point. But right for now for today, we're going to wire these in. Like I mentioned to you guys, <clears throat> you can mount your Pro Chaser down there. Then this part, the pigtail, is what you're going to be working with. So it allows you to like move this around, wire in what you need to wire in, put on your ends. Then you just plug it into your Pro Chaser there. And then hook the two wires you need to to your fuse block. And then everything else is going to go to that fuse block. So when we're dealing with these wires here where they have the ring terminals, we're going to change those to like the, you know, the spade type where we can just put them into the... The screw part there get you guys a little closer it's going to go underneath those screws right there so we're going to want the different kind we'll change them when we get to it but that's kind of what our setup's going to be i'll move them around a little bit see if i like something better but as i'm seeing it looking pretty decent just keep in mind you know you, how you run your wires so you want it to run neat but that's where we're at now let me get these uh situated then we'll start uh putting the ends we need on these like i said you might have to add some wire which if you're running certain things, you're probably going to have to. So keep that in mind. If you're preparing for this job, make sure you get some wire. Uh, so it makes this job easier. Okay, guys, when it comes to wire, you've got many options you can use. You have this wire here, which is in a sheathing. You can get it with a black sheathing or a white sheathing. It's got a red and black wire in it. You guys can see that. But this is copper clad aluminum. So that's why it'll be cheaper for you. And it will work. It's just it's not the best choice for the job. You also have just some regular automotive wire. This is Dorman. Uh, then you have these type, which is what I prefer. These are silicone, um, solid copper wire. And you wanna make sure you pick the right gauge. We're just gonna use the heavier gauge because we're flowing current. And this is really thin for smaller jobs, but this is silicone, so it's really flexible and it's solid copper. So this is what we're going with today. Uh, we'll leave links to this down below so you guys can uh, choose what you like. I'll even leave a link to this spool here. We use this for some random stuff where we're not worried about it too much might not be for long term but uh, you could use that for quite a while before this gives you any issue and then like i said that's just more automotive general purpose but we're going to go with this today let me go over here and show you what tools we're also going to need to put on the ends of these okay guys when it comes to the tools we're going to need it's not too many really you're going to need uh, like we use a micro torch but you can use like a little heat gun or something this is to help with the heat shrinking or soldering if you're going to this happens to be the whole kit uh, we mainly use the torch for this job and maybe some solder. Uh, we're also using the Marine with the heat shrink terminals. So these go on, you can pinch them on, solder them on, and then these are heat shrink tube on the end. So it helps seal it as well. And then you're just going to need like some wire strippers, cutters. Uh, this is the crimping tool to crimp the crimp connections. And then you're all set there. That's mainly what you're going to need, the wire. And these tools will get everything wired in and you can get everything hooked up. So that's all you're going to need for this job. I'll leave links to them down below. They're probably affiliate links through Amazon. They help the channel out if you click on them. Don't cost you anything. So if you're willing to do that, we appreciate that. Let's get out here and get this started. All right, I hope this is a pretty good view for you guys. This is the above shot. Uh, what we're going to first do is hook, put some ring terminals on here on the end of these wires. That gives us enough space to bring it over to the edge of the battery so we can get power from the battery and put it over here to our Pro Chaser. So that's what we're gonna do first. This is just gonna have the ring terminals on this end goes to the battery. The other end is gonna to hook to this, to the wire that's, like this is negative. So we'll hook it to the negative feed for the Pro Chaser. And then that's just gonna go on with probably like a butt connector or I could use a bullet connector. So, but you don't really need a bullet connector because you can unplug. So use a butt connector, join those two with the heat shrink and then that's gonna give us power to our Pro Chaser and everything's gonna come off of the Pro Chaser to the fuse panel. So let me get this started. I mean, if I'm sure if you guys are attempting this work, you've probably 
done this job before, but I'll show you how we're going to do it on this first one here. Then we're going to do the same thing on all the rest of them. We're just going to strip a little wire down like that. And this is tinned copper, so it's, it's really good wire. Normally you would put heat shrink here, but since this is heat shrink, it kind of saves you a step. Make sure you get it up in there all the way. We're going to use our crimping tool. I like this one. It's small. It fits in my hand. Then we crimp that really nice. Test our connection. It's good. So now we can just take our torch and we'll heat that up a little bit just to melt the heat shrink on there. And we're going to do this to all of them, all our connections. We're going to do one on the red one as well. But you can see this took maybe, maybe a minute, not even. And we got our we got our first one done. So now we can go on and do the red one. And then, then those are ready to hook up to the battery. And the under end of this, once we get our distance, we'll hook into the Pro Chaser, into this here. So let me get the red one set up with an eyelet, then we'll keep going. Okay, we got our wires, determined the length of those, and we cut it off and we put butt connectors on the end. And then these butt connectors are gonna go into the appropriate wires of this part, which plugs into the Pro Chaser. So if you, if you needed to know which wires on the Pro Chaser tells you which wires does what, and also the booklet that came with the Pro Chaser will tell you which way to do it. If you're doing it with a keyed switch or without, I'm pretty sure I'm doing mine with the key switch. That way I can shut power off to everything, but I'm not 100% sure. I mean, with these lithiums, you ain't got to worry about that drain as much. Um, that way you could turn the lights on without having the uh, key on if you wanted to, but you could also accidentally leave them on. So it's good to have them on keyed, but you do have the option with the Pro Chaser. So now I'm going to find the appropriate wire on here, hook them into our butt connectors, and that'll be the power from the battery to the Pro Chaser. So that's step one. So let me figure out which one of these go to what, and then we will hook them into the other end of the butt splices there, and then we will go to running wires from the Pro Chaser to the fuse box. All right, guys, we found the two wires that's gonna come off of the plug for the Pro Chaser, and we butt splice them onto our wires that go to the battery. So your red one off of your Pro Chaser plug is your positive, positive in, and your thin black one from the Pro Chaser plug is your po negative in. So we have those hooked up. Next, you're going to have this thin red one is going to go to your key switch if you decide to hook it up through key switch. And then you have your, your uh, positive here is the yellow one, and your negative is this one. This is going to go from here, this plug, over to the fuse block. Over here, you guys can see it. It's going to go to the fuse block from the Pro Chaser to there. So that's the next step is to get the wires hooked to, to this, over to there. Uh, again, we're going to have to, I mean, we could run these direct, actually. It's pretty short. So that's probably what we'll do. That way we don't have to put any more wire on here. We'll just put put the uh, terminal lines we need on there and hook those directly into our fuse panel. Remember, before you go, like, put mounting these down, leave them loose right now so you get all the wiring done. That way you can manipulate moving them around and doing what you need to before you screw them into place. Because you get them screwed into place and you're trying to plug stuff in. It doesn't quite work. But that's what we're going to do now. Put our ends on here. Hook them to the fuse panel. All right, guys, we are on to our next step to hook in the wires off that because we put the ends on here. You guys can see those. We put those on. They're going to go on to the fuse block right here. Um, one thing I wanted to point out, this is why we like silicone wires. See, when you get a little too much heat there because we use the torch, it'll mess with these wires pretty quick. I mean, that's only a surface one. But if you use a silicone wire, the silicone wire can handle a little more temperature longer. So that's why I prefer that. It's just a far superior wire anyway. Side note. But yeah, now we're going to hook these into here. So we're just going to take our nut driver and loosen these enough so we can get that in on the positive and the negative side. They're clearly marked for you guys. So you'll know the top one here you're going to see shows the negative symbol. We're just going to hook this in on the bottom and tighten it up. Make sure you know what direction you want your wire to come in or go out from because that's what's going to dictate it when it's down in there. Ours are going to come from the side. Well, let me see the cover. Actually, it's probably going to come out of the top, so I'll have to angle those a little differently uh, from out of the top. Hope I got you guys in frame. See, good thing I checked that. I wanted to come out the side, but it's probably going to have to come out of here. So we'll have them come out of the top. That's the negative. Now we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. Hook it in the positive down here.
There we go. Now that's our positive and negative hooked up to the fuse panel. So once we plug this into the Pro Chaser and hook the other ends of these into our battery, our battery is going to power the Pro Chaser, which is going to take the 48 volts, bring it down to 12 volts, and feed this fuse block. Then all our accessories are going to go into the fuse block. We're going to run the speakers. We're going to run the lights. We're going to run our sound bar, our light bar. We got three other spots for other stuff. Like I mentioned, we have a sound bar coming. That'll go in one of these most likely. So you've got spots for all that when you feed it down in there. Now, remember, do all this before you mount this stuff. So that's what we did here. Now we're going to put it down in there, figure out how we like to lay it out, and then we'll, we could screw these down. This did come with screws, but I recommend using stainless screws in this environment if you have them. And then uh, we'll just start feeding our accessories into this. Remember, I mentioned on the, some of those wires that we have to do stuff with, the ends... The ends have the ring terminals. We're going to have to change them over to those spade terminals because these don't quite go on this. So we're going to use the spade terminals. Easy in, easy out. So we'll have to change those, but that's pretty much all there is to it here. Um, now you got one more wire. This is your keyed switch. So if you're going to put this to your keyed switch so it turns all power off to everything once you turn the key off, this is the wire you use. I'm not going to do that right now because sometimes I like to listen to the speakers without the card on. So I'm going to leave it off for now. I'll probably hook it up later, but for now, this is off. You can just leave that hanging there. Um, you can put heat shrink on the end to protect it or whatever you want to do. But but that's what we're doing. So let's get this mounted, get this plugged in, uh, get our accessories in here. Then the last thing we'll do is hook this to the battery and put the fuses in here so nothing gets juice. All right, guys, we have our fuse block and our pro chaser. They are mounted in place. Uh, this is what worked best for us with the wires. Uh, now we have... You've seen all the wires hooked to everything. Now we just got to run the positive and negative to the battery. Uh, the Pro Chaser is fused. There's an inline fuse for that also. Plus the fuses you're going to have for your accessories will be there. So you got protections all over the place. So technically at this point, you could put the power to the battery. Um, and it, that way it'll feed this fuse block. And no power is going out of that fuse block until you put fuses in. So we might just hook our battery, our cables up to our battery over here. We just want to route them nicely along here zip tie them up so they have a nice path to the edge of the battery over there and then we'll hook them into our terminals what was nice about this cloud energy they have two positive two negatives so we're going to leave our motor leads on their own and then the one with the charger we're probably going to put these on uh, that's self-explanatory red to red black to black positive and negatives and then we're going to run them along here like they are you see them right there and we'll zip time up here to keep it nice and neat so we're going to get that hooked up next all right, guys, we have everything hooked up. We're going to hook up right now. As you see, our fuse panel, get you guys a little closer, is loaded and marked. You have it as light bar, turn signals, and the stereo. It's the only three 12 volt accessories you have at the moment. Then we got three other spots for other stuff. Everything's wired in. Since we did not do it through the key switch, the other red wire, which is for key switch, has to also go to your power source. So you run that over to the battery as well. It's going to pull power from that. And it activates everything. So if you're not putting it through your key, run that to the 12 volt or to your power source also. If you are putting it to the key, it's just going to route it to the back of your key switch and uh, screw it onto there. But that's all we have to, it's all set up. Everything's set up we need to set up for now. Um, in the last video where we put this in, we still have to put our display on. We're trying to make a bracket or come up with a bracket situation for that. But once that's up, we'll be fine with that. Everything is mounted. Wires are routed. This one's going to be the one to the key switch eventually. That's why I didn't route that in zip tie or zip ties or anything. And we'll probably neaten these up a little bit too. But that's all there is to it. If you are trying to take a 48 volt lithium or something like that, and you want to convert it down to 12 volt with that unit, the Pro Chaser, and that a fuse block is just a, is a nicer way to make it neat. And that'll get everything you need going. So. Hope you guys found that helpful, useful, or anything like that. If you have, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe down below. Anything you've seen us use in this video, we will leave links to those down in the description as well. They are affiliate links. They do help the channel. And it don't cost you guys anything. We appreciate that support. Until next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Try something new.